What's up guys, I might sound a little bit different today because I'm getting over a sinus infection, so uh, hopefully it's not too different, but I really wanted to record this video, it's exciting. So I was really bored the other day, and I decided to look up super negative reviews of Paper Mario just to see what people did not like about the game. And I found something that resonated with me. Uh, the guy said, First, the game is way too easy, the puzzles are nearly non-existent. You flip a switch, reveal a staircase, climb and find another switch, flip it, find another staircase, and so on. I get what he's saying, and it kind of inspired me. Why not try using glitches to create our own puzzles that are genuinely impossible to solve? Sure, hacking the game would give us unlimited potential with that, but I'm talking about working within the constraints of the developer's programming. That way, everything you see here can be done without modifying the base game. All you need is a bit of time and skill. A Paper Mario cartridge has four available save files, and we'll be doing a unique impossible puzzle for each. The idea is for a player to be able to pick up where we left off, but unable to complete the game despite their best efforts. As a result, I named the files Good Luck Saving Peach. We know they won't succeed, but that'll be our little secret. One thing to consider are glitches that allow us to skip sections of gameplay. While these tricks may be unknown to the average Paper Mario player, I wanted to say that these files are unbeatable with confidence, which severely limits our options. Luckily, the linear nature of Bowser's Castle creates a bottleneck that can be exploited for this. Let's start by selecting File 1 and playing through a lot of the game. Late into Chapter 6, Lackluster joins our party, and he grants us the ability to cross spike and lava pits. This is not only handy, but required to advance through the basement of Bowser's Castle. During our first visit with this Bowser door, he sends us to the jail below. We need Bombette to blow up the wall and escape. A save block stands right outside, followed by a platforming segment utilizing all sorts of partner skills. If you don't have Lackluster and you save the game there, congratulations, you're trapped. Yeah, you can get through a few rooms without him, but the softlock will make itself apparent soon enough. So how do we skip Lackluster and reach Chapter 8? Well, we need to back up to when this file has just beaten Chapter 5. We have Sushi and the Super Boots, which is a game-breaking combo in Mount Lava Lava. You might remember in the Evil Cartridge video, we performed a glitch called Peach Warp to skip Chapters 6 and 7. The problem is, Peach Warp also requires Lackluster, or Sushi with this more complicated method. The fastest way to do this is using save block storage to manipulate memory into believing that we're using sushi to swim when in fact we are not. Normally, we can't move with any active text boxes or menus. You'll see why the developers didn't want this happening. Two red springs are placed in this room which are connected to help us reach the platform with a save block. Hit the top spring without touching the bottom, and this makes the game end the spring cutscene, which we never truly started. That means a well-timed spin jump into the save block will perfectly manipulate memory into permitting our movement. Cool, we can run around and save, but we're actually going to translate this storage into the partner menu so we can move during that. Simply cancel the save while the menu is up. Now to manipulate the partner activity. Bombette is easiest, so make sure she's the active partner before we do this. This part is not as difficult as it sounds, uh, we need to ignite Bombette's fuse, hover the cursor over Sushi, and spin jump into a loading zone. As we transition, the game looks at the active partner, which is currently Sushi, and whether or not a partner is in use, which Bombette was. We merge those two characteristics into one, and there you go, swimming on land. Maneuvering through the volcano on Sushi is actually kind of challenging. On the English version, it's very easy to softlock in the spiky ball passage, which can sometimes be avoided with proper angling and a well-placed dive. Thankfully, there are no additional complicated out-of-bound setups to re-trigger the eruption. Just head right under collision, and you'll clear Chapter 6 before you know it. Repeat the whole thing again, and who needs Lackluster to get to Bowser's castle? Our first impossible puzzle is complete with that save block outside the jail. Alright, that was a lot to explain, so let's do something a little less extensive for File 2. Not far beyond the first Bowser door, there are two areas that we've nicknamed the Flood Rooms. This is a short puzzle involving chain pulleys that control the water level, all in pursuit of a key to unlock the next path. Sushi has a major role here for reaching all the other little sections. This time, however, we do have the most broken partner, and his name is Lackluster. <laughs> Facing the opposite direction of certain corners while mounting his cloud will displace our coordinates out of bounds, useful for casually walking on water. We can return to the first room and lackluster clip back inbounds, and then hit a switch to flip a panel down, revealing a spring. 
You might have noticed our Y coordinate was incorrectly positioned at first, putting us in line with the water level despite being on solid ground. Although moving corrects this visually, redoing that clip and staying on the cloud will have us falling through the panel opening. Now underwater, we can leave through the door and save the game. Attempting to complete the floodroom puzzles will prove impossible since the water level is saved to our file and an invisible wall blocks the second room. There's no way up top either, glitches or not. File 3 is really interesting because we have a chance to pull off the whole swallowing a key thing. A bit later into Bowser's castle comes a door with a few block puzzles to unlock it. The key is hidden in this room beyond a secret passage, pretty simple, but we're going to delete the key and make the door impossible to open. Keys are considered key items, it sounds kinda obvious now. This is a special category for one-time collectibles intended to complete the story and side quests. Normally you wouldn't have very many of these at a given point, but glitches can allow us to duplicate or skip using them. There is a limit to the number of currently held key items at 32. Reaching 32 key items is complicated, and although there are much faster ways, uh, to keep this explanation simple, I'm going with Ultra Stone Duplication. A glitch known as Early Whale is super useful because it allows us to set story progress to the beginning of Chapter 5. Unlike most sequence updates, this works infinitely. The problem is, it's arguably the most difficult Paper Mario glitch reasonable for a human to pull off. We get out of bounds using the multi-frame perfect loading zone storage exploit, skewing our entrance angle in the harbor. Once behind the boxes, we meander the near pixel perfect seam and jump around the loading zone to avoid ending up in the previous room. Even though the whale may not be present, a loading zone to his mouth exists regardless. Simply entering will assume we're starting chapter 5 since that's the only time Mario was ever supposed to be here. So now that the story believes us to be in chapter 5, we play up to the Raphael Raven segment. He gives us an ultra stone during the cutscene, so if we grab that, repeat the whale early glitch, and reach this point over and over, we'll end up with all the key items we need. If we pick up another key item from there, what happens next is dependent on how the item is obtained. When items are given to us through cutscenes or treasure chests, they automatically disappear as though we've never received them. On the field, however, that's a different story. The game incorrectly mistakes key items as regular items. That means we're able to eat, sell, or toss them, permanently removing them from gameplay. Memory is laid out as such, where the highlighted address is the start of held key items, and this second highlighted address is the start of held regular items. When 32 key items are held, there is no available slot in memory for it, so it chooses the next best thing, the following section of memory, which is regular items. That's why it starts behaving differently, and can be destroyed without use. Do so with the castle key, save the game, and any unsuspecting player will be completely lost when trying to figure out a way to unlock that door. Keep in mind, Paper Mario does not assign keys based on specific doors, but on the region. In other words, any castle keys obtained in Bowser's Castle can be used on any Bowser's Castle door. The game is linear enough to prevent this under standard circumstances, but skipping sections with glitches will change that. Just make sure all the castle keys have been used before declaring this file officially softlocked. I apologize in advance for incorporating another Goompa softlock, but this one is just too customizable not to share. File 4 requires glitching in an otherwise unobtainable partner, Goombario's grandfather. He sticks around for tutorials very early in the story and is replaced during the cinematic. The thing is, the cutscene can be skipped using loading zone storage, similar to how it was exploited for Whale early. Just because we skip the first partner, Goombario, Goompa is automatically unlocked for the rest of the game. However, there are limitations. Once another party member takes his place, Goompa cannot be selected on the partner menu. But for whatever reason, that does not apply to battles, he can be selected as a partner there. While active, Goompa makes it impossible to switch partners through traditional means. The option doesn't exist during fights, and opening the partner menu crashes the game, at least on the US release. Because of this, the softlock that I'm showing here will not work properly on the Japanese version. So basically, you are stuck with Goompa unless you force a partner swap. Besides story-specific cutscenes, this can only be done using super blocks and the post office. Both of those instances allow you full access to party members obtained so far, and we're going to be effectively disabling those options. Notice how super blocks only permit partner upgrading when there is an available party member for upgrade. This means if we skip a follower that cannot be obtained later with all the story manipulation imaginable, and ultra upgrade every partner we have, super blocks are no longer a viable option. You are bound to Goompa.
Unless you're clever enough to utilize the post office. And, uh, bad news there too. In Chapter 4, Shy Guys cause a bunch of trouble in Toad Town, which includes stealing their supply of letters. At the pink station, this can be reclaimed from a treasure chest. But remember how we can get 32 key items? Since this would be obtained through a chest, it never goes to inventory, so the post office is deemed inoperational for the game's entirety. As I briefly mentioned earlier, the only other possible ways to get Goompa out of the picture is through forced partner swaps specific to story events. Clear those triggers, and you can actually save anywhere you want for the purpose of this puzzle. Goompa cannot help Mario rescue the princess himself, because too many partner abilities are mandatory. Regardless of where you save, the player will eventually realize this, and will be subjected to a colorful game crash if they're desperate enough to switch partners. So that does it for our impossible cartridge. Hope you guys enjoyed this idea, feel free to try it yourself, though a lot of effort goes into it, so maybe it's not worth your time. Huge shoutouts to Bone Crusher, Rain, Rob Dog, and Xylophone for discovering some of the glitches here that made all this possible. You'll find links to support them in the description, as well as to my Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter at Strider7x, where I do all kinds of cool glitch and video updates, if I'm not, you know, dead. Sick. Take it easy guys, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.